Hello. It's me. This time I will show you how to make copper 2 oxide, one of the most useful copper compounds. I will make it from copper sulfate that I made from copper metal in previous video. You can easy make so many other compounds from copper oxide. Here are few of them. Copper nitrate. Chloride. Acetate. Acrylate. Citrate. Bromide. And sulfasalicylate. You can also make copper thermite. There is more than one way to do this and it all depends on the temperature of reagents. The hardest part here is drying, purifying and filtering of copper oxide, and I have tried many routes, after all, I am not sure which one is the easiest or fastest. Our reagents will be copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. You can use potassium hydroxide if it is more accessible to you. For every 100 grams of sodium hydroxide you are going to need 315 grams of copper sulfate and from that you should get 100 grams of copper oxide. Reagents does not have to be very pure. Dissolve both in minimum required amount of water. The reaction is exothermic, so the reaction will heat up a lot and even boil if reagents are hot. When dissolved and cooled to a room temperature or colder I just combine both solutions, you can see a greenish-blue precipitate forms immediately, because of precipitate can trap some of hydroxide and prevent it from reacting mixture should be mixed vigorously. Because of large scale I am using hand blender for this. When everything is mixed well I need to filter the copper hydroxide. This is really hard if you don't have a vacuum filtering kit, and I don't so I use the next best thing a sock. Yes, a sock. I discovered this accidentally, by reinforcing coffee filter with sock. Coffee filter still broke, but sock stopped most of the precipitate. Some of it goes through, but when precipitate blocks the socks fibers only water and soluble stuff goes through. It still takes a long time to filter. Now you have two options wash the filtrate with water, which takes longer or dry the dirty paste in oven sunlight or just a pot. If you dry the paste it will filter much faster afterwards. I chose to dry it and then wash it to get rid of impurities like sodium sulfate. Washing involves pouring as much warm water as possible on impure copper oxide stirring, letting it to settle, decanting, and repeating it several times. After washing a few times I filtered it again, in a sock. it. I weighted my copper oxide and got 227 grams, instead of theoretical 200 grams, so I knew there are still much impurities, but most of them can be removed by heat.
so I took 100 grams of my CUO and heated it in a pot for 25 minutes. Heating will remove any water, copper hydroxide, and carbonate left in the powder, and it did. Copper oxide powder lost 13% of its weight as steam and carbon dioxide, so the yield is pretty close to 100%. Only loses goes through filter, sticks to it or are just splashed, or lost while decanting. The copper oxide is then combined and bottled, I did about 5 runs of this reaction, starting from 50 gram batch up to 200 grams, I have about 500 grams of copper oxide ready for experiments. That's it. Make sure to subscribe and like and everything else. Thanks.